Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints. I we glad to be found in the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Everybody just, just, lift, just, just stand up and begin to lift up your hands and just begin to thank God for having kept us. Come on, somebody open up your mouth. He is a good God. He kept us. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. Some people didn't make it this week, but you and I are still alive. It's by His grace and mercy. Hallelujah. We give Him all the praise. We worship Him this morning. Come on, just lift up your hands and begin to create some glow in the house. His name is Jehovah Sebaoth, the one who fights our battles. His name is the King of Kings. Sovereign Lord, the ruler of everything. Hallelujah. We praise Him this morning according to His excellent praise. We worship Him this morning because had it not been for Him, we wouldn't be here this morning. We thank Him. Come on, somebody just begin to open up your mouth. We lift your name on high. We glorify your name. We invite you in the service, Lord God. We say you are welcome this morning. Have your way. Do things the way you want to do them this morning, Lord God. Take over, Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody just begin to pray the Spirit. Come on, somebody begin to open up your mouth. This is the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, the King of Glory, Strong Almighty, Riba Katolobo Shekete, Hariyadaba Nodobo Shakate. We thank Him this morning that had it not been for His grace, we wouldn't be standing here today. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. We honor and reverence His name this morning. We say, You are Alpha, You are Omega, the beginning and the end. 
We honor and reverence your name. We bless your name this morning. We glorify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody create a new song unto the Lord. Create a new song unto the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Create a new song unto the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Create a new song unto the Lord. We honor and reverence his name. Come on, somebody's just singing your song unto the Lord. Come on, lift up your hands and begin to praise him and worship. We own and reverence your name. We own and reverence your name. We own and reverence your name. We give you all the points. We say, have your way this morning. Be in control this morning. We welcome you, Spirit of the Living God. We welcome you in this place. You alone are awesome. You alone are mighty. You alone are beautiful. You are welcome in this place. Have your way this morning. Have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way. We give you all the praise. We all and reverence your name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Give him praise this morning. Come on. Clap all ye hands. All ye people. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands this morning. Praise Him according to His excellent praise. Let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. Come on, clap hands unto the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us Glory. go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you just praise His name together this morning? Let us enter His gates with thanksgiving. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes,
praise Him for this new day that He's added into our lives. Amen. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. Hallelujah. He's an amazing God. He's a worthy God. And we ought to say thank you to Him. Hallelujah. Ooh, we ought to say thank you to Him. Bazalwan, thank you brings more. Yes. Hallelujah.
Jesus Christ, hallelujah, amen. Um, today is Pastor Nomisa's birthday. She's so modest, she's like, she's, she's not gonna say, you know. But I uh, would wish a uh, happy birthday to you. I uh, hope you're gonna enjoy today, hallelujah. Because now, if you start it with God, hallelujah, there is no way you're not gonna enjoy it, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, we, 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 we wish blessings upon your life. We, we thank God for you attending 25 today. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Ah, come on. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. We shall continue with the service. Hallelujah. I just thought I should just put it out there, you know? Because the birthday cake, the, the birthday cake can't say, hey, it's my birthday today. Please celebrate me. You know, we need to celebrate too. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just open our hearts to receive from God. Hallelujah. Just lifting our hands. Lord, we are creating a highway for you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you lead us, Heavenly Father, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bless your holy name. There is no one else like you, O oh Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We bless your holy name.
come on, somebody, let's lift our voices. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. There is no one like you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. There is no one like you, O oh God. You rule in the affairs of man. You are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. Have your way, God, in this place. We worship and honor you, Father. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, give it up to Jesus. Thank Him for what He has done in your life. Praise Him for what He is doing in your life. Praise Him for who He is in your life. Come on, open up your mouth. Say something to the Lord. Don't look at me. Say something to Jesus. Lord, You are worthy to be praised. There is no one like You. Lord, Your name is excellent your name is indeed our refuge and lord we just want to say thank you this morning in the name of jesus lord some trust in horses some trust in chariots but we put our trust in the name of the lord the name that is above every other name in the name of jesus every knee will bow in the name of jesus sickness flee Father, this morning, oh God, we run to that name, the fortress, in the name of Jesus, our hiding place, that is who you are, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we dedicate this service to you, that you would be exalted, you would be glorified in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving freely in this place. We decree and declare that yokes will be broken, lives will be changed this morning oh god by reason of the anointing in the mighty name of jesus we thank you oh god for the authority of the name of jesus that is in this place in the name of jesus shackles will be broken in the name of jesus those who are bound will be set free in the name of jesus blinded eyes will be opened today in jesus name acceleration will take place this morning in the mighty name of Jesus and we give you all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus we decree and declare that this atmosphere is an atmosphere of heaven where everything is possible in the mighty name of Jesus father we declare this morning that this room is the labor ward of heaven in the name of Jesus may you oh God manifest your purposes even through this service in the name of Jesus we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus mighty name hallelujah let's give the Lord a hand of praise one more time come on give it up to Jesus yes yes give it up to Jesus give it up to Jesus thank you Lord we praise you Lord you may be seated in the presence of the Lord amen well it's uh, good to see each and every one of you special greeting to Apostle uh, Peggy and Prophet Sherry Gamete and uh, of course on their behalf I would like to welcome each and every one of you in the house of the Lord this morning amen it's good to see each and every one of you coming through to worship the Lord together in Jesus name and of course we greet those who are online joining us online welcome to gateway church this morning 
And I just want to see if there's anybody who's here joining us for the very first time. If you're here, please, I would like for you to just lift your hand. We don't want to embarrass you or anything, but we just want to recognize you um, uh, because we deem you as royalty in our midst. Anybody who's here who's joining us for the very first time this morning. All right. Oh, there, my brother. Welcome. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. The ushers are giving you an information card. It's not a membership card. It's just for us to get in touch with you, to get your contacts and be able to communicate with you about some of the activities that gets to take place right here at Gateway Church. All right, let's all stand up as old timers and greet our brother and greet the rest of your old timers as well in Jesus' name. Amen. and welcome to Gateway Church. Thank you for being with us today. Should this be the first time you're visiting us this morning, we hope to see you again and that you decide to make Gateway your spiritual family. Our powerful and uplifting Sunday celebrations takes place every Sunday from 9.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Let's come on time and invite our friends, family and colleagues to also receive of God's blessing and favor. Our Global Prayer Force online prayer sessions are on every Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. The prayer rooms are led by Pastor Serge and Genevieve Kazadi on Mondays, Apostle Sipiwo and Pastor Nokol of Fans on Tuesdays, Apostle Mike Ifanga on Wednesdays, and Apostle Begi and Prophet Sherry Kametze on Thursdays. We are praying for nations, the body of Christ, and personal prayer requests. We are all encouraged to join in on these powerful prayer sessions. Gateway Connect Groups are a place where we connect, grow, and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ in a warm and intimate setting. Our Connect Group meetings are on every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. online. The Zoom link is on the screen and it is posted weekly in our Gateway News WhatsApp group. For more information, please contact our Gateway Info line. Overcomers classes have resumed every Sunday from 8.30 a.m. to 9.25 a.m. These classes are in person and there are three Overcomers classes. Each is four weeks in duration. They are important for your Christian faith and your fruitful membership in Gateway Church. Please register at the Connect Desk to be part of these required classes for new believers and new Gateway Church members. Training for reigning online sessions with Apostle Begi Kametze are on every Saturday from 6 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. Saints are encouraged to attend these powerful sessions. Apostle's book, The Holy Spirit Empowered Life, is available on hard copy for 180 rands or as a soft copy on Amazon. Get your copy and bless your loved one with a copy today. On Friday, the 21st of October at 7 p.m., we will be having our Relationship Breakthrough Night right here at the Gateway Auditorium. 
with Apostle Beggy and Prophet Sherry Gametze. Please invite a friend for a night of divine encounters in the presence of the Lord. For more information on Gateway Church, please visit our website that is www.nagc.org.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on the Gateway Info Line that is 060-934-6222. Remember, all our services are streamed live on our social media platforms that is at Gateway Global and on our YouTube channel, Gateway Global TV. Please follow us and share the content. Enjoy the rest of the service. service. And I want to just encourage you. Today I'm just going to be reading the scripture from the book of Genesis, chapter 8. I'm going to be reading from verse 22. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold, heat, summer, and winter, day and night. Amen. This is a very important principle, and I chose this because it's, I can sense it's a good time. This is the month of October, and when you go around Johannesburg and Pretoria, you see the jacaranda trees blooming. What it signals that it is shas, the, 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 the planting season. When you see a flower, you know that the flower signals that the bees, and the pollinators are now to go to the flowers to pollinate the seed in order for you to get what? The fruit. And it, it is the fruit that contains the seed that when you put on the ground, it gives a harvest. Amen. Now, in the book of uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 uh, reads thus, Let us not become weary in doing the good for at the Appropriate time, we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. So there's a very important principle that each time you carry a seed, your, your seed speaks to your future. So as you're about to give today, amen, I need you to say two key important things that you need to remember as you are preparing your seed, the ashes are getting ready to give you the seed, the speed pointer at the back, and those that are online, please also prepare your seed as well. Very important things that we learn from these two scriptures. Firstly, that the seed is a bridge into your future. So wherever you are and whatever you want, look at your seed and determine your future because what you plant is going to determine your future. Amen. Very, very important. And a very important principle is that if you have the right attitude when you are giving. An attitude of saying, I thank God for that you've given me the power to earn money, to be able to give back to you. So don't give gradually. Give with out of joy. It is joy because you are giving back. And the beautiful thing about how God created, you know, nature, when you have an apple fruit, you know, or an orange, or a watermelon, there's always seeds in there, so that you can eat the fruit, amen, but also remember to keep the seeds so that you can plant for the future, so you don't also want to eat the fruit and the seed, seed is for there to be planted, so I just want to encourage you, saints, as we're about to say our confession, Please, can you put, these are our banking details right there. That are, if you, you know, just please do an EFT. There's a, a, you know, speed point there. Please give your, your, your table of honor. Give your free will offering. And give your tithes in the details that is provided there. All right. 
so we can we all say our confession. I profess this day unto you, my Lord, Savior and High Priest, that you come into the kingdom which you sought to give to us. I cry to you, my affliction, my labor, and my oppression. You brought me forth out of bondage with an outstretched arm, and with signs and wonders you brought me into my wealthy place, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, Lord, I have cheerfully brought the first fruit of the land which you, Lord, have given me. And with it, worship and honor you. I've also brought my free will offering as a seed, believing that you bless it and cause men and women to cause good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to be poured into my food. I plant the seeds who are so miraculous provision in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just stand as we worship God and ask Him to prepare our hearts for the Word. Amen. Father God, we pray this day. Let our spiritual eyes be fixed on You, Lord. Let our, let our spiritual ears be open to You, Father God. That as You speak, Father God, as we receive our daily bread this day, that we will be filled, Father God. That we will be encouraged, Father God. That we will be transformed. Rabababaseki. Come on, just for one minute, let's just open up our mouth and just worship Him for a moment. Just sing out your own song. We bless your name, we bless your name, Jesus. There's no one else like you, Yahweh. We join the angels and bow before you. Come on, everybody. We join the angels and bow before you, Jesus. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the dark. Come on, everybody. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broke. Come on, everybody sing. Great are you, Jesus. Great. time. Great are you, Jesus. Great are you. Come on, church, lift your voice and sing with me. It's your breath, Yahweh. It's your breath. Everybody say it's your prayer. 
you. Great are you, Lord. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be lifted up. All the earth will shout his praise. Our hearts will sing, our bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord is worthy to be praised. As we remain standing in the presence of the Most High, I want to reach in the wonderful name of Jesus and I want us to go into our vision confession right now. Um, and after, as a matter of fact, before we do that, before we do that, there's uh, one thing about next week's Sunday, and I'd like it to go up on the screen and. Uh, because next week, praise the Lord, we also have a special Sunday with our very own Pastor Vusi Liu, who's going to be ministering the Word of God to Hallelujah. us next Sunday. There you go. There you go. Hallelujah. On, Glory somebody. to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the name of the Lord. We just thank God for what He did on Friday night, our Friday night encounter, our prayer encounter was amazing. It was powerful. It was on fire. We had uh, Mrs. Notemba Kula here on Friday night, and we left on another level. Praise the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so before we introduce the speaker for today and uh, worship the Lord with one more song uh, I'd like us to do our vision confession so we can put it up on the screen let us declare this together New Africa Gateway Church is part of a global end time kingdom dominion movement of the Holy Spirit under the Lordship of Jesus Christ we are a rapidly growing non-denominational international family of believers a multi-generational, multicultural household of faith under the spiritual headship of Apostle Beggy V. Gamedze and Prophet Sherry L. Gamedze, who are our founding senior pastors and visionaries. They are assisted by other ascension gifts, ministers, elders, deacons, and many other faithful workers. We believe that salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. We believe that all scripture is inspired by God and that it has final authority. Here at Gateway, the Word of God is preached and taught as it was taught by our Lord Jesus Christ. The presence of God is always evident with manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit and the supernatural. Here at Gateway, Families, marriages, and individuals are saved, discipled, transformed, and made whole. We are blessed and equipped through the anointed ministry of the Word of God, the power of God, and the grace of God manifested in our midst. We decree that we are true worshipers and prayer warriors. We are game-changing workplace ministers, wealthy entrepreneurs, and kingdom financiers. As kings and priests, we are God's anointed solution bringers at home, the body of Christ, our communities, and marketplace domains. Our vision 
is transforming lives and building nations. We are a Bible-based, Christ-centered, kingdom-minded community of believing families, households, and individuals. As New Covenant believers, like Abraham, we are cheerful tithers and financial partners to Gateway. We give generously as a lifestyle and obey the Word of God and enjoy God's covenantal blessings in every area of our lives. We decree that multitudes gather to worship and serve the Lord with us in person and online. We decree that through Christ, doors to failure, defeat, and frustration have been closed and that doors to success, victory, and blessing are open to us in Jesus' name. Excellence marks everything we do. By faith, we decree that we own our own land and buildings, including a 2,400-seat, 24-hour prayer and worship center and a 7,000-seat, state-of-the-art Gateway Crown Dome auditorium in Midrand. We see a new Africa that is a blessed, united, peaceful, and prosperous continent of hope over which Jesus Christ reigns from Cape Town to Cairo. At Gateway, we are believers and doers of the word. As a result, we rule and reign in all areas of life in Christ, in Jesus' name. Everybody say, and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And before you take your seat, uh, it is my honor, my privilege to, to bring back into this house a son to Prophet Sherry and myself and daughter, praise the Lord, they're here together today. Um, Apostle Zipom Shara, we go back a long, long way. Um, we go back to uh, when he was still a student uh, in the kingdom of Eswatini now, it is kingdom of Swaziland then, and uh, God just connected our lives. He's doing a tremendous work he has a church uh, work in uh, Swaziland, in Manzini. He has a work in Brakban. He's got work he's covering even in Mozambique. I saw some wonderful pictures of the work that is happening there in Maputo, in Mozambique. And God is just using him as a tremendous apostolic voice to our generation and to our times. And before he comes up and be as we're going to minister to the Lord in worship, can we welcome the gift of the Lord that's in this house today, Amen. Apostle Zipo Shara. Come on, we can do better than that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. And now let us worship the Lord, and the next voice you will hear will be the voice of Apostle Zipo Shara. We bless your name, Jesus. We love you, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh, Rasiana, la babos. Oh, we thank you for your presence. Everybody lift your voice. You are here. Yes, Lord. And you said you never leave. We need you, Lord. Rabbi We need you, Lord. Come on, if you're desperate, just open up your voice. You are here. And you said you never leave. We need you, Lord. Yes. We need you, Lord. Oh, we need you, Lord. Everybody. We need you, Lord. Yeah. We need you, Lord. We desperate for you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Hey. 
your voice. Oh, we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Oh, we trust you, Yahweh. We trust you, Lord. Oh, we trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Lord. Yes, Father, we love you with all of our hearts and we declare that you are the lover of our souls and we worship you today, Lord. We thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you for your glory that is here with us. Thank you, Father God, that you are moving by your spirit and you do a work in our lives this morning. Thank you, Lord, that your word has a free course and that utterance is given to us. Thank you that you confirm your word with signs following. Thank you that as you minister to us today, you establish us and our lives will not be the same as we leave your house today it won't be the same as our coming in and for that we give you the glory and the praise and we thank you in advance in the name of Jesus and everybody said everybody said amen, amen. come on let's give God a clap offering hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. What an honor. What an honor it is for, for me and my wife and my two kids to be here today. Um, we were looking forward to this because Gateway Church is the best church in Houghton and South Africa. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, it's, it's such a blessing to be here. 
and just to be a part of what God is doing in this beautiful house. Um, it's always a challenge to, to stand here where apostles and prophets stand with the kind of grace, the kind of revelation and wisdom that flows out of their lives. Yo, it's always a mountain. <laughs> I must say that um, I, I honor apostles together with um, uh, prophet, we honor them together with my wife and my family as, as our parents in the Lord. And um, we are eternally grateful to God for, for the connection. And um, I also want to say that we, we are so much blessed by your ministry. Um, I don't think there is any pulpit that is able to deliver the kind of ministration that you guys receive from here. I, I speak to, to my wife oftentimes, my, my beautiful sugar and spice. <laughs> I, I, I speak to her, you know, oftentimes, and I say to her, I, I don't think we really perceive apostles and prophet for who they are in the kingdom because we are blessed with 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 true generals in the kingdom of god and at times you know when light is too close to you the tendency is to be blinded by it and not to perceive it for what it is and my prayer is that we will not be too familiar with them, that we take the grace of God upon their lives for granted, but that we'll always be appreciative of the verses and the gifts that they are to us. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise for them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, my, 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 my message is, let, let me just put it this way, that... I hear the voice of God through their voice. I, I believe that the reason why, uh, you know, Samuel kept on going to, to Eli when it was actually God that was calling him, it's because, it's because the voice of Eli had become like the voice of God in the life of Samuel. And so, I hear the voice of God through their voices, and uh, the messages that I preach, uh, they find their definition in some of the messages that uh, apostles and prophets share. Um, the message that I'm actually going to be sharing today, which I've been sharing for the past like two months, was influenced by a statement, I think that was shared by uh, uh, apostle, and I, I, I was just watching online, and it, it's amazing how at times, you know, apostle will just share a statement, just a statement, and God would use that to define messages that I would minister for the next, like, couple of months, and um, I bless God for the apostolic and prophetic voices that you are, not only to Gateway Church, but to the body of Jesus Christ. And my prayer is that God will open the eyes of the body of Jesus Christ to perceive you and to recognize the grace of God that is upon your lives. Amen. I have a word that the Lord has laid in my heart. It's something that I've been working on. And, um, and the Lord just put a twist to it as I was actually preparing to share uh, this morning. And thank you for trusting me with the opportunity to stand where you stand, men and women of God. Um, and so I want us to speak about divine encounters. And I'm going to share a few 
nuggets that I believe will be helpful to all of us uh, on divine encounters. And uh, I observe all protocol. I recognize all the pastors that are in the house, Pastor Vusi, Pastor Lunga, Pastor Numiso, all the pastors that are in the house, um, and the ministers, Minister Sparks, and um, the leaders, you know, the deacons and the elders, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to use John chapter 4 for our case study. John chapter 4. By the way, happy birthday, Pastor Mumiso. <laughs> Amen. We celebrate the goodness of God with you. I'm, I'm, I'm so, so blessed by the praise and worship in this house, big time. I don't think there is any praise and worship team that is says, powerful as anointed as Gateway Praise and Worship Team. <laughs> and I, I, I'm, not, I'm not just flattering you. They, there is something about the praise and worship in this house. And it's not, not only the voices, thank God for the great voice, it's not only the voices, but the substance, the authenticity of the presence of God, the weight that comes with what is delivered and ministered in this place. Amen. I'm always blessed when I come here. I don't just come to, you know, even when invited to minister, I don't come just to minister. I come to take. <laughs> and my, my prayer <laughs> and my prayer is that before we leave, we will have the opportunity to, to be prayed for by apostle and prophet. Uh, my plea. Amen. <laughs> John chapter 4. Um, I want us to read, uh, okay, let's read from verse 4 in the interest of time, and I'm just going to read just a few scripture verses, we're not going to read the whole thing, but it reads in verse 4, and he must needs go through Samaria, then cometh he to a city of Samaria, he came to a city of Samaria called uh, Saicha, next to the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. And look at verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, he said thus on the world, and it was about, it was about, it was about the sixth hour. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it thou, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have not dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knew, if you, you knew the gift of God, and who, is, who it is that says to you, Give me water to drink, you would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. Now, we are told here in verse 4 that Jesus had to go through Samaria. He, he had to go through Samaria. And if you read the whole portion, you realize that the reason why Jesus had to go through Samaria is because he needed to have an encounter with this woman that we're reading about. It's amazing how, how, how God is go, will go through lens and breadth just to have an encounter with one. Just one. He had to go through Samaria for this one, for this woman. And we are told that Jesus, being wearied from his journey, he sat by the well. Very, very interesting that, you know, Jesus was 100% the, 
the son of God, but he was still 100% the son of man when he was here on earth. And as a human being, he got tired. And we are told that he was wearied from his journey. And because he was wearied from his journey, then he had to sit by a well. In other words, the one that had watered others needed to be watered himself. The one that had refreshed others, he needed refreshing himself. He needed to be refreshed. He sat by a well. And him sitting by this well was actually a divine setup. As a matter of fact, it was, it was his thirst that drew him to this well. And we cannot talk about true godly encounters without talking about thirst because if we are going to have true, genuine, lasting encounters with God, we will have those encounters because of thirst. It is thirst that draw us into the presence of God. It is thirst. Hallelujah. And so the issue of thirst is a big one on this one. Jesus was drawn to this well by thirst. This woman goes to draw water because she's thirsty. She's thirsty. And the reason why she had many husbands is because she had a thirst. It's just that she was seeking to quench the thirst in the wrong manner and in the wrong places. You know. But everybody has a thirst for God. That is how God has made us. He has wired us such that we all have a need. We all have a yearning. We have, we have, we have a need, a thirst for him. All of us. There is a God-sized void in every one of us. And that void that is in us cannot be filled by any other thing. You know, she was trying to use the husband. You know. And she kept on changing the husband, but the thirst was still there. You know. So it is only God that can meet that thirst and that yearning and that desire that we have in the inside of us. Because that desire, that need is the size of God. In other words, it is only God that can satisfy. It is only God that can truly, truly satisfy. That is why Jesus, when he speaks to this woman, he says, uh, the one that will drink the water that I will give to them they will drink this water and never thirst again. In other words, God has the capacity to quench our thirst. But even as he does quench our thirst, we still uh, remain thirsty for him. And it's important that that thirst is ever abiding in us because that thirst keeps us coming to him over and over and over and over again. In the book of Psalm 63, he says, early will I seek him. He says, he says, I thirst for you in a dry and barren land. In other words, what draws me to you, what keeps me coming to you every morning and every early morning is the fact that I'm thirsty for you. I'm thirsty for you. And the moment we lose our thirst, we will lose those encounters with God. As a matter of fact, we won't even be drawn into his presence because it is the thirst for him that keeps us coming. I mean, yesterday you prayed, yesterday you had an encounter with God, but you still come the next day because there is a thirst for God in the inside of your spirit. Somebody said, I'm thirsty for God. Somebody say, I'm thirsty for God. That's the reason why. We, ha we are here this morning. We are here because we are hungry. We are thirsty for him. The Bible says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for his righteousness. For they shall be filled in the kingdom of God. You are blessed when you are spiritually poor. When you recognize your need for God. And the opposite of thirst is complacency. And the church... Of Laodicea in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 3 had a challenge. They were complacent. They thought that they were rich. They thought that they had it all together. When in actual fact, 
In the eyes of Jesus, they were desperate. They were pitiful. They were, wretch they, they, they were a wretched people. And he tells them to buy. He tells them to buy true gold from him. Amen. And so complacency is to be satisfied, to think that you have arrived. That is complacency. And in the natural, in the natural, if you lose your appetite, it is a sign of decay. It's a sign of sickness. It's a sign of disease in the natural. A loss of appetite is a sign that there is something wrong with you. See? In the spiritual, if you lose your appetite for God, it means there is a spiritual decline and decay that has started to happen in your life. If you cannot do the things that you used to do when you first fell in love with Jesus, <laughs> it's an indication that there is a decline that is taking place in your life. If you are comfortable about going to watch a soccer match, Instead of coming to church first on a Sunday, something has started to happen in your life. If you are comfortable about starting your day without spending your time in the presence of God and just you're comfortable about doing all your daily chores with that ease, there is something that has started to decline in your life. Something needs to be fixed. Somebody said, I'm thirsty for him. Come on, somebody say, I'm thirsty for him. One of the greatest things that God can ever deposit in your life is thirst for him. And my prayer is that we remain thirsty for him. I'm looking at the life of Paul. The first encounter that he had with Jesus was on the road to Damascus to persecute the church. And you know the encounter. So this blinding light fell, fell off from his horse. And he has an encounter with Jesus. Who are you, Lord? What do you want me to do? That is the first encounter. And he had a series of other encounters and personal revelations that he had with Jesus Christ. But 28 years after that first encounter on the, on the road to Damascus, this is what Paul says in the book of Philippians. That I may know him. That I may know him. What do, you, what do you mean, Paul? I mean, you have seen Jesus face to face. You've had great revelations. As a matter of fact, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. What do you mean that you may know him? There is no ceiling in knowing him. There is no ceiling. You don't get to a place where you hit the ceiling and you think, it's enough, I've arrived. And it's important that we stay, we stay thirsty. We stay, we stay thirsty. Now, God gave me a revelation some years ago about what takes place in heaven when those angels worship him and they repeatedly shout to him, holy, holy, holy. And this is, this is the revelation. This is how he made me understand the whole thing. And he says to me, when these angels respond and they shout to him, holy, because worship is our response. Worship, when we worship God, we are simply responding to all that which God is, has, and does. And so worship is our response. And so he tells me, he says, when these angels shout holy, they are simply responding to the holiness of God. And it sounds like they are repeating it, but it's not a repetition. Because when they say holy, they have seen a layer of the holiness of God that they never saw before. They never saw before. It's a new revelation. It's a new dimension of the depth of the holiness of God that they have never seen, that they have never experienced. And this thing has been going on throughout all of eternity. And so we never arrive with God. We never arrive. We never hit the ceiling. We never get to a place where we have had enough of God. His mercies are new every morning. Every time you encounter him, every time you encounter the presence of God, he is always fresh. The presence of God is always fresh. And the words that he speaks to us, it is always fresh. 
It's amazing how we have been reading the Bible for years. But every time you read the Bible, God speaks something fresh to you. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Present continuous. God is always speaking. God is always speaking. And what he says to us is always, is always fresh. And he says in Isaiah chapter 43, Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. Do a new thing. He says, do not cling unto the things of the past. Don't cling, don't hold on to what I did. Yes, we have to be grateful. Yes, we have to be thankful for what God has done in the past. But what God has done in the past is not everything that there is. It's not everything that God can do. There is more that God has in store for your life. I said there is more that God has in store for your life. What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what has not been conceived in the heart of man, God has prepared good things. And there are many good things that God has in store for your life. If you think what God has done in your life already is everything that God has, has to do, you are in for a shock. The best is yet to come. Can I speak to somebody here? The best is yet to come. As a matter of fact, God is going to show himself strong on your behalf even before the close of this year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say there is more. Come on, somebody say there is more. Very, very interesting here that we are introduced to this well that Jesus sat beside. And we are told it was Jacob's well. It was Jacob's well. And Jacob is a man of encounters. And we saw that encounter in Genesis chapter 28. He came to a certain place. Came to a certain place. He lay there. It wasn't comfortable. I got that from a faucet. The place was not comfortable. It was, a, it was a stone that he put his head on. That's not a comfortable place, but it was the place. So sometimes the place may not be comfortable, but as long as you encounter God, as long as you encounter open heavens, and he, he saw this stairway and the angels of God were ascending and descending. And he says, this is none other than a house of God and a gate unto heaven. Every house of God must connect you to heaven. If that church is not connecting you to heaven, it doesn't matter how sophisticated the building is. It's not the place. But if it's the place, it must connect you. It must connect you to heaven like we're connected this morning. Like you come into the house of God and you come with a new experience. You come with a fresh touch from the Lord. Hallelujah. Jacob had an encounter. And in Genesis chapter 32, he had another encounter. He rested with God the whole night. But left alone, rested with God the whole night. I said with God because he said, I've seen the face of God. I've seen God face to face. And yet my life has been, has been preserved. So it wasn't just a man. It was God that he encountered. And now he has left a world. The man is long dead. But people are still drinking from a well that he dug. People of divine encounters will leave a legacy. They will leave worlds that will remain long after they are gone. And generations to come will drink from those worlds. Even after they've departed and have gone to be with the Lord, we are still speaking about your Kenneth Higgins. We are still talking about uh, your Ngidi, your Bengus. They are long gone. They are with the Lord, but they left some wells. They left some wells. 
And we all speak of generational blessings and there are things that we, we, we are learning from them to this day. And so people that have heard true genuine encounters with God have left some wells. They leave a lasting legacy behind them. They leave a legacy. Hallelujah. And we are talking about all these great men of God, all these great generals of God that have departed to be with the Lord that are in the cloud today. And the reason why we even mention them, it's all started with encounters. Somebody had an encounter with God. And we are talking about the Catherine Kuhlmans. And because they had serious encounters with God. And we talk about them today. Based on the encounters, they've left some worlds. There's, there's wisdom that we still have a learning from what they left us with. The books that they left behind. We're still reading those books and are spiritually enriched. And so people that have encounters with God, they will leave a legacy behind for generations to come. So this is the, the well of Jacob, the man of encounters. And people are still drinking from it. Watch this now. Watch this. I already have said that Jesus actually had to go through Samaria because he had to have this encounter with this one woman. Somebody say this one woman. Come on, say it again. This one woman. One. Hear this. Encounters are personal. Yeah, they're personal. I thank God that we come together uh, to church. And we come corporately to worship the Lord. But I tell you, our experiences are not the same. Our experiences are not the same because we connect to him in a personal, in a personal way. And so encounters are personal. Come on, tell your neighbor, it's personal. It's personal. It is personal. It is personal. In the book of Genesis chapter 32, verse 24, the Bible says that, when he was left alone, he rested with God when he was left alone. In the book of John chapter 1, very, very, very interesting narrative in John chapter 1. This is what happens. Now, John the Baptist is traveling with his disciples and they see Jesus approaching from a distance. And John the Baptist made this this comment. He says, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And the Bible declares that the next day they have the same experience. They see Jesus coming from a distance. And John the Baptist again makes a comment. This time he doesn't say who does what. He just says, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. As if he is suggesting to the disciples that what I said yesterday about him is my experience of him based on my encounter. And so if you are going to say something about him for yourself, you need your own encounter. You need your own encounter. And the Bible says that at that, the disciples of John, they started following Jesus. They started following Jesus. And Jesus, he, he, he actually turned... He turns around and he says, what, what are you seeking? And they said, they said, show us where you dwell. Show us where you dwell. In other words, you cannot encounter him if you are not accustomed, if you are not familiar with the place where he dwells. In other words, in other words, for you to encounter him, you must be familiar with his presence, where he dwells. Show us where he dwells. And the scriptures tell us that he does inhabit the praises of his people. The scriptures show us that he's available when we come to him to pray. He dwells in the secret place. Amen. 
Show us where you dwell. And Jesus says, come and see. It's an open invitation. Come and see. And the Bible says that they abode with him. They abode with him. They abode with him. Because if we are really going to encounter him, we must abide. It's not going to happen if we, if we just clock. We really must spend time. As a matter of fact, Apostle shared a scripture in Genesis chapter 35. The call to go back to Bethel. God is calling Jacob and he's calling him to go back to, to Bethel. And this is how God, say, how, how God tells it to him. He says, go back to Bethel and dwell there. And so Bethel, the place of encounter, is a place where we dwell. We dwell there. We don't just... It's not just a matter of visiting in and out. It's not a hit and it's a hit and stick. We stay there. Somebody said Bethel is a dwelling place. That's where we stay, we dwell. In other words, if we are going to have true lasting encounters with God, we must pay that price of spending time in his presence. At times, 10 minutes will not do it. Now, it has to be upgraded to 30 minutes and then an hour and then two hours and then three hours and then it gets to a time when, where time doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. You are just glad to be in the presence of God because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy and His right hand are pleasures forever. There is no place like the presence of God. Hallelujah. There's no place like the presence of God. But you see, it has to be a personal decision. Thank God that when we come together, we are, we are encouraged. It, it, it's powerful to come together. We should not for, forsake the habit of coming together. It's powerful. It's powerful. But you need to build a life where you are able to encounter him even when you are on your own. You're on your own. I mean, I'm married to my wife, but my wife cannot have an encounter for God from me. I must have my own encounter. It was enough that the disciples of John the Baptist had John's testimony about Jesus. They needed to have their own encounter. They needed to have their own encounter. So that they will have their own testimony. So they could have their own experience. And so this thing has to be personal. It has to be personal. Hallelujah. It has to be personal. It has to be personal. Here it is now. Here it is. Number four. Divine encounters... They involve a breaking. If you are going to truly encounter God, there will be, there will be breakings. There will be breakings. In Genesis chapter 32, we are told that Jacob had an encounter with God. Came to a place called the fort called Jabok. And Jabok means, is actually the place of breaking. The place of breaking. And you remember what happened to Jacob? That as he wrestled with God, and it was getting to, to daybreak, God had to dislocate the socket of his hip. It's a painful experience. There's a breaking that took place. But the very place where the breaking took place was the place of his making. You see? I'm going to say that one again. The very place where the breaking has taken place becomes the place where God makes him. That's the place where God changes his name. And he says, you are no longer Jacob, you are Israel. God reigns, you are a prince of God. Now, not only... 
Not only does God change his name and his identity, but he also changes his walk because then the next day, when the next day comes, Jacob is not walking the same way. You see? And I say the acid test to every genuine encounter with God is a changed life. It is transformation. If our lives have not been transformed then that encounter was not true. It wasn't genuine or either it was it was genuine. We are just resisting the change. You cannot have an encounter with Jesus and remain the same way. It's impossible to have an encounter with Jesus and remain the same way. And when we have those encounters, oh, there will be times of breaking. And I'm not saying that God is going to do, will be doing the breaking. As a matter of fact, in Israel, you know, you know that the shepherd walks ahead of the sheep. Not like we do it like in Swaziland and here in South Africa that we are behind the livestock. And so you have the shepherd ahead of the livestock and the sheep, they follow the shepherd. They know his voice. You know, and as he calls them, they follow him. And once in a while you have this, this, this sheep that always goes astray, you know, always doesn't want to listen to the shepherd. And what he does is he will intentionally break its leg. Painful. Break its leg. And the purpose, the reason why he breaks the leg is not just to punish it. He doesn't do it to punish it. He does it so that this ship will learn to depend on the shepherd. And so he will carry it because now it's healing. It's healing. And he will carry it every day. Walks with it. Talks to it. And it becomes more acquainted and accustomed to, to his voice. To the voice of the shepherd. And it bones with the shepherd. So that by the time the healing is complete, it has bonded with the shepherd. It will always know the voice of the shepherd. And it will always follow the leading of the shepherd. And so sometimes God allows the breakings. I'm not saying that God breaks us. I'm not saying that God will pick up, you know, uh, a huge stick. And, you know, I, I was, I'm laughing because I'm, I'm remembering the status that I saw. And somebody was saying, <laughs> It's saying I don't think that's God but God may allow breaking situations they, there's a difference between doing it yourself and just allowing it because God in his manifold wisdom is able to use all things to work together for our good. What was meant for your harm, for your destruction, God is able to turn it around and use it for your own good and for your own advantage. Yeah. And so, every encounter will involve a breaking. And the purpose behind the breakings that we go through are there to teach us to depend on Him. To lean on him. To realize that without him we are nothing. At times God will break you just to remind you that yo, you cannot do this thing all by yourself. You need to depend and lean on me. Hallelujah. And so every true encounter, there will be some breakings. And God doesn't break us to break us. He doesn't break us to kill us. He breaks us. He breaks us. To make us. Hallelujah. 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 These encounters, I'm going back to what I said earlier on, just to put some more sense to it. They are personal. Somebody say it's personal. Somebody say it's personal. It's personal. It's personal. 
As a matter of fact, the woman that had an issue of blood, I like that one, has been losing blood. And you know the story. And she said within herself, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. I want you to notice something here. This woman initiated the encounter. She decided to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Now the challenge with most of us, we wait to be touched. You have to initiate the touch. You need to be the one that makes the first move. And the Bible says, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. And one of the things that I've come to realize about God is the fact that God is not going to fix what is not broken. He will not water what is not thirsty. He will not feed what is not hungry. And God wants to see your thirst. He wants to see your hunger. And you have to initiate the encounter like this one. This woman, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. He didn't just touch the garment. The hem, the most anointed part of the garment. Because when the oil flows from the head, most of it will collect at the hem of the garment. And so this woman touched the anointed part of the garment of Jesus. Didn't just touch the garment, but she touched what was touching Jesus. Now listen, and Jesus does not say, Jesus doesn't say, who touched my garment? Jesus said, who touched me? Because the anointing on you defines your life. The oil that is on your head determines what happens around you. You are defined by the anointing that you carry. Who touched, who touched me? She made a withdrawal. She made a withdrawal. I mean, people are crowding. And she is not the only one that is in contact. Because the people were pressing. The people were crowding. But Jesus turns around. And Jesus says... <laughs> And she, she, Jesus didn't say, some people touched me. Jesus said, <laughs> this is personal. Jesus said, somebody, somebody touched, somebody say somebody. <laughs> somebody touched me. In other words, faith carries your fingerprint. You see? Faith carries your fingerprint. In other words, the Bible tells, tells us in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 that the just shall live, watch what, 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 uh, by his faith, not by somebody's faith. In other words, you have to, to, to hear God for yourself. You have to hear God for yourself. I heard somebody said that they heard somebody testify that the Lord spoke to them that they should go to the grocery or to the supermarket and one of the big shops and start putting some grocery. They didn't have the money. They just had, they had from God. That it putting on, putting on uh, groceries into that trolley because God had spoken to them. And when they got to the tier, somebody paid for them because God had spoken to them. And if you're going to do that yourself, And God didn't speak to you. Because faith is personal. Faith comes by hearing. You've got to hear God for yourself. No word, no hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you have to hear God for yourself. And you have to hear God speak to you personally. It has to become rhema. It has to become rhema. I like what Jesus said when Satan came, 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 came to test him uh, in, in, in Luke chapter 4. The Bible declares, now Jesus caught at the scriptures. He said, it is written. The first time, he said, it is written. To resist the devil. And if you don't have the word, what are you going to use to resist the devil? Because the word of God is a double-edged word. And the second time he says it's written. But the third time, Jesus did not say it is written. He said it is said. In other words, 
he the word of God has been realized now God is speaking to him personally it's a personal situation now you have to hear God speak to you personally somebody say these encounters are personal hear this now hear this this woman this Samaritan woman she she encountered Jesus and obviously there was a transformation that took place but the more she spent time with Jesus is the more her perception of Jesus actually changed the deeper the encounter the deeper the perception at first she called her she called him sir at first she calls him sir sir you don't have anything to draw with and when Jesus speaks to her and tells her the fact that even the husband that she has it's not her husband the sixth one she calls she calls Jesus prophet and the more she encounters Jesus that changes that upgrades and now she calls Jesus the Messiah, the Christ. See? And so the deeper you spend time with him, the deeper perception you will have about who he is. Let me say that one again. The deeper, the deeper you spend time in the presence of God, the deeper your perception of God. There are things that you will know about God, not in the shallow. You have to go deeper. Those that do their business with God in great waters shall see the wonders of God and his works in the deep. There are things that you will perceive about God, not in the shallow. You have to go deeper. Come on, tell your neighbor, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Let's launch into the deep. Let's move from the 15 minutes to the 30 minutes and from the 30 to the 45 and from the 45 to the hour. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this now. And so the deeper she encountered Jesus, the deeper perception she had about Jesus. Watch, watch this now. Never, and I'm going to end with this one. Never underestimate what God can do with the life that has been transformed. Never. With the life that has encountered him. Never underestimate what God can do with that life. And so if God is going to change a city, if God is going to change a nation, if God is going to change a continent, He's not just looking for everybody. He's looking for people that will have an encounter with him. Because when he transforms those individuals, through those individuals, whole cities will be transformed. Nations will be transformed. Regions will be transformed through the transformation of one. And so this woman was transformed. Overnight, somebody say overnight. I know there is a gradual work of transformation that is happening in our lives. But there is works of transformations that happen instantly. I mean overnight, this woman, this woman that was a hallowed, overnight she becomes an evangelist. And she goes to the city of Samaria and she evangelizes and she tells them, come and see the one that has told me everything that I ever did. And I always say, to win souls to Christ you don't have to know all the Bible you don't have to know homiletics and hermeneutics and exegesis no yeah, that, that is important but you need to know your story you need to know what happened to you you need to know your testimony your testimony is enough to change another life when shared with another person if we can all if we can go out there and begin to tell our own testimonies 
to the people out there, you will be amazed at the transformation that will happen in the lives of others. As we share our own testimony, you just have to know your testimony. Just tell you now, you have to know your testimony. You have to know how he has transformed you. And I tried to confuse this man that was born blind. But Jesus opened his eyes. And the religious leaders tried to confuse him. He said, do you know that the one that opened your eyes is a sinner? As a matter of fact, it's very, very interesting that Jesus would take mud and put it into his eyes. It was mud. The mixture was mud. And mud has the potential to close the eyes of a seen person. And Jesus takes mud and he puts it in the eyes of a blind person. Look at God. How God will take something that had the potential to close your eyes. The potential to destroy you. And he will use that to do good to you. I mean clay, mud. Even if you, your eyes are seeing, if somebody takes mud and he puts them in your eyes, it will close your eyes. That is what Jesus takes. And he puts it in the eyes of this blind man. He says, go and wash in the pool of Silo. And so these guys come and they say, do you know that he's a sinner? I like his response. I like his response. He says, whether he's a sinner or not a sinner, I don't know. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm just a novice in this thing. <laughs> I do not know. But one thing I know. If you've been transformed, you know you've been transformed. If you've been changed, you know that there's a change that has taken place in your life. Yes, you've been transformed. But the good news is the fact that as you behold him on a daily basis, as you behold him, the Bible says you are being transformed into his image. There is a morphing that is taking place. There is a formation of Christ that is taking place every day. Hallelujah! There is a transformation. There's a transformation that is taking place and I'm finishing with this. I'm finishing with this. The brothers of Joseph could not recognize him after God had transformed him and placed him at the palace. They could not recognize him. What do you mean? He was 17 years when they parted ways with him. You know how they betrayed him. And now he's 30 years. I mean, if somebody is your brother and you grew up with them you are able to recognize them even after 10 years but they couldn't recognize him because of the transformation that had taken place in his life and the word is this beloved the transformation happens in the encounter that is where it happens. When we spend time in his presence, that's when we are transformed. And so Joseph was so transformed that the brothers could not recognize him. He had to reintroduce himself to his brothers. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that as you spend time in his presence, as you wait on him, the transformation will be so drastic in your life. The transformation will be so drastic in everything that has to do with you. It will be so drastic that you will be beyond recognition. You'll be beyond recognition. Our present suffering is not worth comparing with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There's a glory. There's a weight that is coming upon us. Even this season. Even this season. And so some of the things that we have gone through, some of the struggles and the challenges 
that we have gone through were actually labor, labor pains to help us to birth this new level. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. She brought forth. We are in a birthing season. Some new levels are being birthed, new dimensions, new breakthroughs, new encounters are being birthed in the season that we are at. But it happens as we encounter him, as we touch him. I want us to stand on our feet. And before we leave this place, just for a minute, let us touch him. Let us touch him. Before this woman that had an issue of blood touched Jesus, she was losing life with every loss of blood. Because life is in the blood. She was losing. But after she touched Jesus, the virtue came out of him and she started gaining. There was a reversal of the cycle that was going on in her life. I just want us to touch him before we leave this place. And as we do that, there will be a shift. Instead of losing, we'll start gaining. Come on, just talk to him. In the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody touch him. It's personal. Oh God, we refuse to be the same after we've been in your presence. We refuse to be the same after we've encountered you. Lita pande ritazia blande rica sto bla baba. Shande de de bosta karabande de de besta. Shanda ribande kiso tala la baba yada. Shande kabande rista blande bliza de resta la la baba. Lambare de 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 shanda la la baba. Santo rabande de de besta kalalande de de besta. Come on, somebody, just press in just for one, one more minute. One more minute. Come on, just press, press, press. Hey, Kale ala la mande de de bo shara da 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 dandi kali ada ba kante papari a mande sta kala la ba ba yada lito lo la bo sta la la ba 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 kala bande de de bo sta maya lida bande de de bo sta la la ba ba haya I declare to you that from today you will start gaining no more losses no more losses no more losses i hear the lord say no more losses he says i will restore unto you the years that the locust the caterpillar the palm and the canker worm has devoured you shall eat and be satisfied it's a new season no more losses hilalamande shalalababaya I see you gaining in every aspect of your life. In your spiritual life. In your relational life. I see some gains after the losses. I see some gains in your finances. I see some gains. There is a shift. There is, an, there is a rearrangement of things. God is at work. God is working for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Shande Baba Shalala Baba. I see gains coming into this house. I see gains. I see additions and multiplication. I see increase in every level. Oh, it's a new season. And the Lord is doing a new thing. Oh, and God will give us 
double shines brighter for our trouble and brighter so that we forget our troubles. It's a season of recompense. It's a season of compensation. God is compensating us in His justice system for all the losses that have been incurred in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of victory in this house. If you believe it, give God a shout of victory. And brighter. The closer I get, the closer I get, the closer I get, the more I see, the more I see, the glory of the soon coming King, the glory of the soon coming. Oh, the glory of Jesus, the glory of Jesus shines brighter, shines brighter and brighter. The closer I get, the closer I get. The more I see, the, the more I see. The glory of the soon coming king. The glory of the soon coming king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands to him and respond to him right now. Father, we thank you that you will never release a word like this. If you did not intend to perform it and to give us encounters. So even now, Lord, I thank you for the performance of this word. It is personal. And Lord, we thank you for a new thirst, a new hunger. Remove from us every sense of complacency and give us a fresh thirst and a fresh hunger for you, Lord, that we might keep on chasing after you. Thank you, Lord, for that thirst, and thank you for that hunger. As we go on, and we're going to sing It's a New Season, we're going to sing It's a New Season, I wanted to notice something here, that these encounters, these encounters with Jesus, very few of them, took place in church. The man was by a pool of Bethesda. The man was let through a roof into Jesus' house. The woman with the issue of blood, Jesus was on his way to preach somewhere. Blind body Emmaus was on the roadside begging. The woman was at the well. None of them were in the synagogue. I want to tell you, don't limit an encounter with God to church. It is the ideal place to have an encounter, but it's not the only place. God can meet you while you're waiting for the taxi. God can meet you in the Uber. God can meet you in the kitchen. God can meet you at work. While you are working online, God can meet you anywhere. Be ready. I'm here to tell you, get ready for an encounter. That when we leave here, it does not mean the opportunity closes. It means it has opened for you to get your divine encounter. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Wherever God chooses to meet with you. Hallelujah. It's a new season. It's a season of encounters. I declare it. I see it. I believe it. Hallelujah. And we need to thank God and start declaring it right now and say, this is my new season. 
This is my new season. This is my new season. It's a season of encounters. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, we're going to sing that one. You are here. Moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Moving in our lives. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Why? Because you are a way maker. Way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, way maker, miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God. Take it up, take it up. want to help a few people you know many times we get a message like this and we really don't know what to do with it but I'll tell you what to do with it God knows your address he knows where to find you he knows where to meet you I want to encourage you right now I see somebody this week their whole life is about to change yes, in a supernatural encounter and intervention with God that's going to take your life in a new trajectory. This is your week. If you receive that word, say to yourself, this is my week. Everything is about to change about you. Everything's about to change in your life. Yes, this week is a Hallelujah. week. Hallelujah. Hey, yeah. Hallelujah. This is a week of change, of, of transformation and divine encounters that are going to change your life. See, three men, three men in this house, three men in this house. Everything's going to change, starting with your spiritual life. It's going to change. Ha! Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's going to change. It's going to change. You're about to break through, and you are struggling in your prayer life, and it's like you were hitting a glass ceiling. You're hitting, hitting a ceiling in prayer. You just could not penetrate. If you lift up your eyes now and lift up your hands, you'll find you are under an open heaven. And that ceiling is gone in the name of Jesus. And you're going to begin to fellowship with the Lord. You're going to begin to hear from God. You're going to begin to receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 The reason why we continue to worship because that he's not done with somebody. Don't let this distract that you. Is this, is this is personal. This is personal. That is who you are. This is your opportunity because it's reaching out to you right now to touch you. Yes. That is who you are. This is what we came for. 
That is who you are. That is who you are. Yes. That is who you are. There's a saying that, and we just flowing, we're flowing, we're flowing. There's a saying that you can take the horse to the water, but you can finish the sentence, but you can't make him drink. The water is here, folks. If the thirst is there, And the drinking will take place. That is who you are. 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 For somebody right now, this is going to be your first encounter with Jesus. The first encounter is to encounter Him as Savior. You've come to church, it's the right place. You've gone to churches, that's a good thing. But you never had an encounter with Jesus as Savior. And today you're saying, I'm responding to the encounter he's giving me right now. He's knocking at the door of your heart. He's saying, I'm here. Open the heart. Open the door and I will come in. Wherever you are, even online, you're saying, that's me. I want to give Jesus my life. I want to be my Savior. I want to be my Lord. Raise your hand so I can see it, so we can pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Someone is saying, I, I've gone so far, so far. I thought the Lord was not interested in me anymore. I thought he'd forgotten about me. I went so far away, but I'm coming back today. And he's, he's giving you an encounter as Savior, that he's still your Savior. He's still where you left him. And you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you online? Glory to God. Now's the time. Encounters begin right at the cross. Right at salvation. If you never had an encounter there, there will never be another one before that one. To know Him. To see Him as Savior. And Lord, it's the beginning of all the other encounters. So Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your name for the word that we have received today and the prophetic utterances and declarations that have been made. We seal them under the blood of the everlasting covenant in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. One more time, give God praise for the word that we received from... 
Amen. Apostle Z. Pumtanga. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. 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 We're going to let you go. We're going to release you. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday, Pastor V is in the house. Amen. Make some noise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, last week we had a tremendous time with the global um, prayer force online. Uh, we were there every night from Monday to Thursday. God met with us in a powerful way. And I know that God's going to continue to meet with us. As you decide which night you want to participate in, join the global prayer force. These are opportunities to encounter God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to do something here because I still sense that God is still at work in some people. We're going to close the service, but we are going to have just about five or ten minutes for an afterglow.